Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we've been invited on board the Battleship North Carolina, and one of the very interesting differences between Battleship New Jersey and Battleship North Carolina is the armor arrangement. So in today's video, we're going to talk about North Carolina's external armored belt. And today's video is brought to you by Rustic and Maine. Rustic and Maine makes rings, uh, like, uh, like wedding bands similar to this one. I'm not married, just married to the battleship. But uh, they, they make rings like this one out of reclaimed wood. And my ring is made out of reclaimed wood from the deck of Battleship New Jersey, of course. They also make a similar ring made out of teak from Battleship North Carolina. So there's a link for them in the description down below. If you're uh, looking for a ring for a special occasion, be sure to check that out. So, uh, North Carolina is two classes older than Battleship New Jersey, uh, one generation older. She is a North Carolina class battleship, followed by the South Dakota class, and then of course the Iowa class. They're all treaty battleships, with North Carolina and South Dakota designed to be 35,000 tons, and the Iowa class designed to be 45,000 tons under the escalator clause. North Carolina was originally built with a uh, main battery of 14-inch guns in mind. The Second London Treaty in 1936 was trying to step down the size of battleship guns from 16 inches to 14 inches. And so the United States designed a ship to match that. Typically, you want your armor to be roughly the same size as your guns. If you're building a ship with 14-inch guns, your enemy is probably also building a ship with 14-inch guns. Uh, and, and my rough rule of thumb for armor, like I've said a number of times on this channel, is one inch of armor will stop one inch of shell. So if you have 14-inch guns, you probably want 14 inches of armor. American fast battleships do something interesting that the uh, British pioneered on HMS Hood, and they angled their belt outwards. This means that the belt has to be longer because it's not just going straight up and down, it's going at an angle, but that still saves weight because it can be a little bit thinner. So in North Carolina's case, her belt is 12 inches thick, uh, but it still has the equivalence of 14 inches. Problem is, none of the Axis powers, including the Japanese, signed the Second London Naval Treaty. So the United States and Great Britain decided, all right, we're not going to do this. Everybody else has the potential to build 16-inch battleships, so we're going to uh, go to 16 inches ourselves. The problem is, armor is a really long lead item. It, it takes a long time to cast face-hardened armor like you need for an armored belt. Uh, and so that was already being made. The design of the ship already accounted for that armor in the weight. You can't just increase the thickness by a couple of inches and still expect this ship to float at 35,000 tons. So she was stuck with a slightly lighter armored belt. That's okay. Armor was the lowest priority for American designers during this time period. So none of the American fast battleships have uh, as much armor as they should if they were prioritizing against their own caliber guns particularly because of the types of shells the U.S. Navy was developing. The South Dakota and Iowa class have 12.2 and 12.1 inch armored belts, respectively, but it offers better protection against 16 inch shells. How is this possible? The way the South Dakotas and the Iowas pioneered it was by moving the armored belt inside of the ship. So an enemy projectile has to punch through the external uh, side plating of the ship, the shell plating, before it gets to the armored belt. And that means that your shell is going to decap, it's going to lose its armor-piercing nose, and it might even start to tumble. So by the time it hits the armored belt, uh, it's not going to have enough force behind it to punch through. The traditional way of building a ship, and the preferred way by the Navy, is to mount your belt externally. An external belt gives you a couple of benefits. One, Small caliber shells can punch through the shell plating on an Iowa-class battleship. A destroyer with three, four, five-inch guns can punch through the inch-and-a-half shell plating, easy. They can't punch through the armored part of the ship, but they're still going to cause flooding. So you're, you're uh, still getting a mission kill out of relatively small hits. They cannot defeat the watertight integrity of an external belt. Two, an external belt can be installed after the ship is launched. So you can build it on a smaller uh, slipway. 
New Jersey was the largest ship launched stern first in North America at the time of her construction because her belt had to be built inside the ship prior to her being launched. Uh, this caused some major problems and it caused some delays between the completion of Battleship Washington, North Carolina's sister ship, and construction of New Jersey starting in the same slipway because they had to modify the slipway to take a significantly heavier vessel. And then they were concerned throughout the entire process that they wouldn't even be able to push the ship in the water, that gravity wouldn't be enough to slide her down the ways. As it turns out, it worked, but potentially New Jersey could have gotten into the war sooner had uh, they been able to start construction immediately after Washington was completed instead of waiting for the slipway to be reinforced. So even though an internal belt can offer more armor protection for less weight, like I said earlier, it's not what the Navy preferred. With the Montana-class battleships that were unrestricted by the Washington Naval Treaty, they revert to an external armored belt. Another interesting feature that we can see from the outside of the ship because of this great walkway that the North Carolina staff built all the way around the ship. Uh, so again, this, this is really cool being able to see the ship 365 degrees, which you can't really do. You can sort of do with Wisconsin and Norfolk. You can't do it on uh, New Jersey or uh, any of the other museum battleships I can think of really. This is a great feature. It allows you to see the bulge for the torpedo defense, which is sort of bolted on to the external uh, side of the ship for the armored belt below the water. Uh, so that, that is a really interesting feature that, that is part of the original design. It's not an aftermarket thing like, say, Texas's torpedo blisters or the ones that were added to the other standard type battleships. We've done a series of videos comparing battleships like North Carolina, South Dakota, and Montana to New Jersey. Be sure to check those out. We've also previously filmed on the South Dakota class battleship Massachusetts, which has an armor scheme very similar to New Jersey with an internal belt. Check out those videos as well. There's also a link in the description for Battleship North Carolina if you would like to watch YouTube videos that they create here. Come out and visit this museum or support them in other ways. Check out their website below. And also check out the link to today's sponsor, Rustic and Main. Again, Rustic and Main makes quality rings like this one. Uh, I've been wearing it for a couple of weeks now, and you know my job on the battleship, it's, uh, it's pretty rough. I, I slam my hand into hard metal all the time. I, I broke a wristwatch not too long ago, hitting it on something, and you can tell from this ring, it's not uh, scratched up or dented at all. Most of my coworkers wear those rubber rings, but uh, I have no issue at all wearing this one. And again, it's got a gold band in it, it's got uh, teak wood reclaimed from Battleship New Jersey on the outside, and it's got uh, oak reclaimed from a whiskey barrel on the inside. So that is an extremely cool ring. You should definitely check out their website if you're interested in uh, something like this. What do you think about internal versus external armored belts? Do you think the weight saving is worth the added risk of flooding? Let us know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.